We have other videos that talk about the basic input output system of your computer or the BIOS, but there are also some really nice security functions built into the BIOS. If you look in there, you'll probably have a security tab or a section in your BIOS that talks about security. And there are different passwords you can assign. Generally, there's two levels of passwords. There is a user password, and there is usually a supervisor password or a master password. The user password is there that prompts up a password whenever your machine is started up from a cold start. And the BIOS loads up, and it says you have to type in your password to even boot this computer up. So as long as you have that password, you can start the system. If you don't have the password, you can't even start the operating system. Very nice security in that regard. The supervisor password is usually installed on a machine when you want people to uh, be able to start up the computer, but perhaps not change the values of the BIOS of the computer. So if you don't want someone going in here and changing the power settings, changing the different drives or the access to the USB ports, then you want to set a password up for a supervisor password that prevents anybody from changing anything in the BIOS. And that way you can still have users boot up, perhaps even without a BIOS, but they can't change anything within the BIOS settings themselves. Speaking of passwords, we use passwords on websites. We use passwords to log into the network. We use passwords everywhere. But it's important to keep in mind that if you passwords are to be functional, we have to be sure they are secure and they are difficult to guess. If you look at a study of the top 10 most popular passwords, it's these 10 that I added up here. One, two, three, four, five, six is the most popular password you'll find. The second most popular, the word password. That is definitely not a very good password. And the third most popular, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can see some of the others are listed there. You would want to be sure you're not using any of these terms or words as some of your passwords. Incredibly easy to guess this way. Your passwords are should be kept private. These are important pieces of information. You should not be writing them down anywhere. You should not put them on a yellow sticky note and put it under your keyboard. We all know how, how to do that. We've all seen that before. And it makes your password relatively useless. Somebody just needs to stop by your desk, and now they know exactly what your password is. And that's why in Windows environments, the administrators usually set certain requirements when you are logging on to the network with your domain administrator access, your domain access. And they usually set up certain group policies that require that you must have perhaps uppercase in your password. It may require lowercase and numbers, or perhaps non-alphanumeric or Unicode numbers or letters. And you can see a good example of that is the word secret password. I've changed the A to a 4. It's got uppercase in the start of it. That's not really a fantastic password, but it gives you an idea of how the complexity changes the way that people see the password. And it's kind of hard to guess that one because there's a number in there and there's uppercase. The complexity becomes really important, especially if your particular user account has a lot of important information around it and behind it. Don't write down that password anywhere. Don't store it somewhere. Get something that you can remember. Change some of the case or add some of the different numbers inside of it. It'll be a much more secure password than if you didn't. There's a number of things you can do with security on a workstation. Managing the security on a workstation takes all kinds of different forms. Let's step through a few of those. The first is, how do you how do you get to the computer? You can lock down the computer with physical locks so somebody can't take the computer. You could cover up the keyboard with a keyboard lock. There are things that you can do to prevent physical access to the computer. In some cases, if you have physical access to the computer, you can bypass a number of the BIOS settings that are in there. So by preventing somebody from opening up the case or having access to the physical device, you can also make it more secure. You can also make sure that when somebody is authenticating on the machine that you don't have uh, an account that's set up with no password associated with it. Or you use a capability in Windows to automatically log in. There's some registry settings you can do to do that. If you're in an environment with a lot of people and other people have access to your computer, and your computer is storing very, very important information or has access to important information, don't set it up to automatically log in. You want to be sure you have a good username and a very good password so that your local authentication is as secure as it can be. 
On my machine, on my laptop, I have a fingerprint reader for biometrics. I almost sometimes forget what my password is because I simply slide my finger across it and it allows me access to my computer. It's almost a very quick way of typing in a password, and that password is my fingerprint. There's nobody else that has that password, so it makes it very secure if I'm trying to get into my computer. If you are now in your computer, you may want to take certain drives or certain directories and encrypt them. NTFS is a very good example of a technology, a file directory system that allows us to pick certain directories and encrypt them. And we can also make sure that we can take entire files, entire disks themselves with some of the capabilities in Windows and encrypt those up as well. So if you have information you want to be sure that nobody can ever see unless they have the right credentials, you may want to consider doing some type of encryption. There's also a technology called TPM that you may run into. This stands for Trusted Platform Module. And sometimes this is a piece of software that's written. It's a very standardized way to create the cryptographic keys that you will need for this encryption. There are a number of computers that have chips or TPM modules built into them. They're either already existing on the motherboard, or there's a module that you can get that puts that encryption piece on the motherboard. And you're not able to use that encryption methodology unless you have that hardware, which uh, of course, is going to make it much more secure to be able to have encryption built into this particular system. When you get into high tech environments where it's very, very secure, it's government installations, TPM almost becomes a requirement. So if you're looking at a machine, looking at the specifications, or you're looking at a piece of software and it says requires a hardware TPM module or a computer with a particular TPM module, you'll know what that's referring to. Let's see what you can remember from this module on security technologies. Our first question, what wireless networking encryption type is the most cryptographically secure? We know there's a couple, and the ones that is now the most modern and indeed the most cryptographically secure is WPA for Wi-Fi protected access or WPA2, which would be even better. What type of malicious software can propagate without any user intervention? Well, we know there's one type that we have to click on to run it. There's other types that pretend they're one thing and they're really not. The one that can propagate without us even being involved is a type of malicious software called a worm. And the last question, what type of BIOS password is used to prevent booting the operating system? We know there were two different password types. But there was only one that really restricted somebody from starting up the operating system, and that was the user password. Well, that covers what we needed to know for our security technologies. We've gone through wireless encryption, malicious software protection, BIOS security, our password management, locking the workstation, and we even talked about biometrics. If you'd like to watch any of our other a videos, participate in our message boards, and much more, you can visit our website, freeaplus.com.